Hi, how do we make the diagnosis of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures? Well, the diagnosis can be tricky and not as obvious as we would like to. Welcome to the psychogenic non-epileptic uh, uh, seizure series. And in this part, we will discuss in details the diagnosis and how can we make it. And in the previous video, in the first of this series, we discussed in detail what is psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. And I will leave a link in the description below. There are lots of differences between epileptic seizures caused by excess electricity in the brain and psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. If we look at the shaking and how the seizure happens, so this is the um, summary of all the differences. So in general, epileptic seizures are uh, short-lasting rather than non-epileptic seizures. Usually they're long for more than five to 10 minutes or even uh, 30 minutes. It can occur out of sleep in epileptic seizures. It usually happens with incontinence, with tongue bite, and cause lots of injuries. And usually there are no pain conditions or other psychiatric comorbidities in epileptic seizures. And in psychogenic non-epileptic seizures, it can be having um, events not coming out of sleep and it will have a rare incontinence and no tongue bite and injuries are rare. And usually it can happen in the doctor's office. So lots of times like the patient will come to the doctor's office and then they will have an event right there or as we are hooking the EEG electrodes, they will have a seizure. This can be non-epileptic seizure or is more likely to be non-epileptic seizure. So all of those are differences. And the best thing is to record the event with video. You or your loved one to record the event on video and then bring that video to your doctor for analysis. If we look at the seizure for non-epileptic patient, the seizure will usually start gradual, usually stop and, uh, and go, and then usually it is charged with emotions. The patient can be crying during the event. Uh, it can be asynchronous, means like shaking, and then it, different shapes and different uh, areas, different planes. Asynchronous means the arm will shake, and then the leg will shake and change from one limb to another. It is long for five, 10, 15 minutes minutes or longer, and then the patient will have some pelvic thrusting, back arching, all of those are characteristics of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. These are some examples of non-epileptic seizures. Look at this patient having like all of those shaking all over and um, like asynchronous and tapping in the bed, some emotion with the event. And this patient is having psychogenic non-epileptic seizure. Look at this, like sudden jerks and back arching and, and some emotion with that. So all of those are a good examples of non-epileptic seizures. On the other side, let's see this patient who have an epileptic seizure. Look at this, like at the beginning of the seizure, the patient like eyes open. Look at that, like the back arching and sing up all over. And then the patient will go into tonic phase and then clonic phase, like shaking, jerking. And then look at this, like very aggressive. The patient's completely out of it. And the seizure stops within like, you know, like 40 minutes, uh, 40 seconds, and in a short period of time. And the patient would be completely worn out after that. When we make the diagnosis of non-epileptic seizures, there is no one sign that can be 100% confident and 100% diagnostic. What we do is that we combine all those uh, events and all those signs to be more suggestive of non-epileptic seizures. And don't let anyone tell you that they can 100% say if the seizures are epileptic or non-epileptic, because there are some tricky cases and the scientific studies show that no one ever can tell 100% if those seizures are epileptic or non-epileptic. So to make the diagnosis without any doubt, we bring the patient to the epilepsy monitoring unit, which will have video and EEG recording at the same time. So the patient will have their typical event of seizures, and then we will see the video, what they do during the event, and we will see the brain waves. And if the patient had all the seizure and the brain waves continued to be completely normal during the event, that can be diagnostic of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures. The gold standard for the diagnosis of psychogenic non-epileptic seizures is inpatient video EEG monitoring. So we'll bring people into the monitoring unit and we will taper any medications that they might be on, um, anti-seizure medications. And then uh, hopefully over the course of the admission, they'll have one of their typical events or one of the, if they have more than one, then we'll capture one or more of the events. And what that does is um, with taking a good history, with the description of the seizures and with the neurologic and psychiatric aspects of seizures, 
uh, then with capturing the event, we see the actual image or the video of the events co-registered with the EEG, looking at the bra brain waves corresponding to the event. Let's have a little word about the EEG diagnosis in non-epileptic seizures. So it is true that EEG can be normal in epileptic seizures. So here's the thing, hear me in this because that's very important. So when we have an EEG, EEG is a kind of low quality test sometimes and it needs about 10 to 20 uh, centimeter cubic of a brain area, kind of like bigger than a golf ball. That's a large area of the brain that all synchronized and causing the seizure to be able to be picked up on the surface. So we have some cases of normal EEG during the epileptic seizure. So in those cases can be either if the seizure is coming from a very tiny area. So like somebody has like a shaking in one finger or one arm or one face shaking and that can be normal in EEG because the area is too small. Or if there is like some experience like deja vu or some fear, anxiety, which is usually short, not like panic attacks uh, to be long, usually short and happens in deep areas of the brain that are far away from the uh, seizure uh, or the electrodes that are recorded. And the other scenario in an epileptic uh, activity of frontal lobe epilepsy, the seizures usually happen explosively out of sleep, bizarre, shaking, jerking, screaming, fear, uh, flipping around, like very dramatic seizures that usually happen out of sleep, lasts for like 30 seconds or a short time, and the patient will regain consciousness quickly. And that can be limiting because it can be from deep areas in the frontal lobe that are not be able to pick, be picked up by the EEG, or the EEG will be obscured by lots of myogenic artifact, means like the muscle tensing up will prevent the EEG from seeing the activity. So here's the thing, if you have complete unconsciousness and the patient is unresponsive, eyes closed, with EEG that is normal, that is diagnostic for non-epileptic seizures. We cannot say that, oh, this is like EEG can be normal in, in seizures, no. Because if you are unresponsive, the only way that you have epileptic seizure is if the seizure is engulfing the whole brain. All the brain is engaged in a seizure and it is unable to respond and that 100% will be seen on EEG because it's all over the brain. So only those few cases that are rare and very specific that the EEG will be normal. And in regular non-epileptic seizures shaking all over, it will be normal and that will be diagnosed. So there are other biomarkers that were tested for non-epileptic seizures, such as famously prolactin. So prolactin, here's like, we thought that in epileptic seizure, the prolactin will be squeezed out of the brain and then we will increase and non-epileptic seizures will not have high prolactin. But that's a great idea, great theory. But when we tested this in the field, in the epilepsy mounting unit and in real patients, this was unfortunate that it was not reliable. So prolactin fluctuates so much in the day of the time, day, and even like in the period and all of the month and gender differences. And also it, it needs to be like specifically tested 15 to 20 minutes after the event and then repeat it again one hour for a baseline and it does fluctuate a lot. So now we don't use prolactin to prove that this was non-epileptic seizure. Another test that your, your doctor might think of or you think of is a brain MRI, looking uh, at the brain and taking pictures of the brain. So a brain MRI is not really like indicated or like will not show anything in the brain in psychogenic non-epileptic seizures and it will be normal. And most of the time it is not indicated, but we do it to just comfort the patient and uh, make them feel that we did all the testing that is needed and, and you know it can be supportive that we did MRI and was normal. And it is very important to not be misled by those normal variants or kind of white spots that are very non-specific all the time happens in migraine and diabetes, hypertension, just age or anything. You know white spots are very non-specific and other things that can be seen like uh, arachnoid cysts. Arachnoid cysts can be anywhere in the brain. They are completely incidental finding. They are not associated with epilepsy based on very large stages of thousands of patients. So arachnoid cysts do not cause epilepsy. So if you see arachnoid cysts, like don't say, oh yeah, I have, I have uh, epilepsy because of that. And EEG can be overread. So here's the thing. There are some variants in EEG, especially called wicked waves and benign uh, small uh, spikes or benign sporadic sleep spikes. Those are very tiny, sharply uh, sharp activity that are normal and they can be read as abnormal by inexperienced doctors. So if you're not like your doctor is not like highly trained in epilepsy, they might overcall those 
EEG changes and they call them epileptic activity when they are just a normal variant. And it can be dangerous because it can label patients with non-epileptic seizures as having epilepsy because of a wrongly read EEG. So when the psychogenic non-epileptic seizure happens, there is like a real changes in the brain and it will be completely overpowering the, the brain. And there is a dissociation between the brain and the mind and the body will not be under good control and the patient will not be able to respond or control themselves. So that's why it is not intentional. It is not um, uh, doing it to have any secondary gain. And what happens is that they go to the emergency department and the doctor start to pinch them and, and inflict pain and like, oh, stop doing that. Don't do, don't pinch the patient. They're not faking it. You don't get them out of the seizure by pinching them because this is painful. The patient can feel the pain, but they cannot respond. So don't do that. So sometimes like patients, uh, the ED doctor calls me like, oh, this is just non epileptic seizure because I pinched them and they woke up. And it's like, uh, don't do that. This is very bad. Because non epileptic seizures are real conditions and they need to be treated appropriately. And our own study, unfortunately, found that about 15% of people with non epileptic seizures, they go to the emergency and they get intubated for non epileptic seizures and put on sedation because it's just kind of not being diagnosed correctly. So when we make the diagnosis, the best way to deliver the diagnosis is for sure as the doctor to be confident about the diagnosis and say positively what the patient has. So first, we do a video EEG and we confirm that the patient had those symptoms and those events and those shaking and everything experience was happening in the hospital is the same that happened during the house or, or outside. Because so the same thing that we recorded is a representation of what happened at home. And then we have a normal EEG and then the events during that uh, was typical and had normal EEG. Then we say like, yes, this is a diagnosis of psychogenic and epileptic seizures. And then we go into further explaining why this happens and how to treat it. And this will be creating a very confident diagnosis of a positive diagnosis and what they have rather than saying what they do not have. It's like, oh, congratulations, you don't have epilepsy, but like, you know, you don't explain to them what they really have. And after we deliver the diagnosis, the first question we have is, what causes psychogenic non epileptic seizures? Why I'm having this and how can we help with that? So yes, the first thing I will say, this is not only stress and it is very important to know what are the causes, which we will discuss in details in the third video of this series that you can see here and stay healthy and see you in the next one. Salam.